$2,668.26. This just in, it turns out expensive cars have expensive repairs. Now, if you're checking out this wheel right here and you're wondering, wait a minute, wheels are round and it's sitting on a flat surface, how come it's not rolling? Well, this wheel isn't round anymore. As you can see, it's got a nice little flat spot right there from hitting a pothole. Now, I've never liked low profile tires. I really don't think they have many objective advantages. They do allow uh, for you know, larger brakes and they might have slightly better steering response, uh, but they come with a lot of disadvantages. The reason why it's done really is for aesthetics. And if you've ever looked at me, you've probably been aesthetically pleased. However, you might know that I prefer you know, function over form. And so in this case, uh, I really do like the Tesla Model 3 performance. Unfortunately, it only comes with this size wheel, uh, which is part of the performance package, which they all come with now. So a 20 inch wheel is what comes on the car. So I thought, you know what, how bad can it be riding on a low profile tire with these massive wheels? And I found out. We hit a pothole, and I know what comes next. Here comes the blame game. Hey Jason, have you considered not hitting a pothole? That's a great idea, but it was unavoidable. So first of all, if you've ever driven in the Midwestern United States, I really don't need to say anymore. Second of all, I wasn't driving, but I don't blame the person who was driving. Uh, reason being, it was unavoidable. There was traffic to our right in a merge lane coming into our lane. There was traffic to our left in the passing lane. We had nowhere to go. There's a big pothole in front of us. We hit it, no big deal. Sometimes these things happen. So what happened? Well, on the passenger side, after hitting the pothole front and rear wheels, we got two flat tires and two broken wheels. And this wasn't some strange wild back road that we were on. This was on a state maintained public highway. We'll get more into that later on in the video. Okay, so why did this cost so much? So we're just gonna take a look here at the invoice. The tire itself is $340. I looked on Tire Rack. These are listed for $350. Uh, so that's a fair price that they're charging there. The wheels they charge charge $715 for. So of course we have two tires, two wheels. That's about 2000 once we add that up. We also had to get an alignment. It was pulling to the right once they put the new tires and wheels on. Uh, so an alignment was $280. And then we have $380 in labor. The service center's hourly rate is 175. Uh, so our total amount being $2,668.26 for split second hitting a pothole. Ouch. So you're thinking, wow, that must have been the worst pothole ever. And yes, it was a bad pothole, but was it the worst pothole ever? No, and how do I know this? Well, we pull aside after getting the two flats and call Tesla roadside assistance, and it took them an hour and 40 minutes to get a tow truck to us to take us to the nearest service center. So while we were waiting on the side of the highway during that hour and 40 minutes, not a single other car pulled over from a flat tire. So I don't have all the data in the world, but I sat there for 100 minutes watching all the cars go by and not a single one got a flat tire while we did going over this pothole and not just one, but two. So why did so much damage occur to this car while so many other cars just kept driving past? And when you start to analyze this vehicle, the tires and the wheels, you start to kind of get an idea of why that may be. And so of course, yes, part of it has to do with the fact that it has low profile tires. The other part is these wheels are actually pretty narrow. So there's not a whole lot of you know, contact that's hitting the ground anyways. They're pretty narrow tires. On top of all of this, uh, this is a very heavy vehicle, 4,100 pounds about. So a lot of weight is going on a pretty narrow tire with very low profile on it. And so, you know, you kind of start to add these things together on top of which this suspension doesn't have a whole lot of travel. It's the performance version. So it has the largest wheels, the lowest profile and the least amount of suspension travel. They actually reduce the uh, suspension ride height by 10 millimeters for the performance. So that means it's going to have to be a little bit stiffer and also a little bit stiffer to accommodate for this weight. So when you have a stiff suspension, low profile tires that are super skinny, uh, you know, you add it all up and it turns out when you hit a pretty decent size pothole, uh, which this certainly was, uh, you end up with some damage and you have this cracked wheel like we see right here. Now, am I saying that it's Tesla's fault that this happened? No, we hit the pothole, weather created that pothole, and Illinois' Department of Transportation did not fix that pothole. So if anyone is to blame, it's those three, it's not necessarily Tesla. They simply put a wheel on a car and I drove it, 
hit a pothole and damaged it. I'm not saying this is Tesla's fault, but I do think it's disappointing that on a car this heavy with all these elements that I discussed, uh, there is not an option for a smaller wheel. So there used to be when the performance first came out, you didn't have to get the performance brakes and you had a smaller wheel option. And unless you're taking this thing on a track, you really don't need these performance brakes. You've got all the regen from the motors. That's gonna do most of the braking anyways. So it's disappointing that you can't get these without this performance package for the discounted price. They all come with the performance package package. That means they all come with 20 inch wheels and that means they all come with low profile tires. Low profile tires are simply the trend now in the performance world and I think that's disappointing. So aside from the fact that running a low profile tire means you're more likely to run into flat tires or damaged wheels, what are the other actual disadvantages here? So one of them being cost. As your wheels get larger, your wheels get more expensive. As your tires have to fit around a larger wheel size, these tires get significantly more expensive. Uh, so one disadvantage there being cost. Another being ride quality. So your tires actually act like a second suspension for your car and they're a big part of the ride quality of your car so when you get these really narrow these short little sidewalls here that have to be very stiff your ride quality is very stiff as a result so you reduce the quality of the ride now you do get a little bit better steering response because it turns very quickly you don't have any mushiness really here in the tire but again it takes away from ride quality and then finally, when you have these really low profile tires, it means you're using these really big wheels and these really big wheels turn out to be very heavy. And so you have a large rotational unsprung mass, none of which is good. Uh, so from a performance standpoint, really you want smaller wheels as long as you can fit the size brake that you need. Now, I'm not here to complain about how much all of this cost. I bought an expensive vehicle. I have to live with the consequences of if I do face repairs, they're probably not going to be cheap. So that is entirely on me. I'm not going to deny, though, that I think that it's super lame that hitting a pothole, something that takes less than a second, means three grand is now gone. Uh, that's very disappointing because there's a lot of cool things that you can do with $3,000. There's a lot of great things that you can do for other people for $3,000. Uh, so to simply replace two wheels and two tires that were brand new that had 2,500 miles on them, that's pretty lame. I mean, they weren't even curbed. If they had been curbed, then I feel like I could have at least validated it and been like, well, it's okay. Now my car looks a little bit better, but uh, really no change, three grand gone. So that, that part is disappointing. But the thing that made me the most upset about this experience is that two people voiced their concern that I probably wasn't going to get these wheels fixed the same day. So the first person was when I was getting towed to the service center uh, and he was saying, you know, it's rare that they have those 20 inch wheels in stock. You're probably gonna have to stay here for a bit while they get those shipped in. Uh, and this was in Chicago. Now I'm 2000 miles from home. So this is really my only option. I got to get wheels put on and I got to continue along with my road trip. So the second person, once we got to the service center uh, and Tesla roadside had not informed the service center that we were showing up. So when I showed up, it was like, who's this guy? Why is he here? And I'm like, Hey, I need new wheels. I just called service. And they're like, well, we haven't communicated with them. So that part uh, wasn't great. But then once I showed up, they were like, oh, okay, what wheels do we need to get on there? Are those the 19s? We should have those, no problem. And I said, no, this is the Model 3 Performance. It's got the 20 inch wheels. And immediately you could see they were like, uh-oh. Uh, because they were concerned and they were like, oh, you know, it's, it's, we don't always have those in stock. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, why would a place not stock the only wheel for this vehicle at a service center? So showed up at the service center and they were shocked that they had them in stock and that I could keep going along on my road trip. And also I was pretty lucky in this scenario because I was just 28 miles away from a Tesla service center. The warranty, what it says is that you have to be within 50 miles, otherwise you have to pay to tow yourself to the service center. But in a lot of the places in the country, you're not anywhere near a service center. So where I live in Idaho, I'm 350 miles away from the nearest service center. So it's like, that's, that's a huge inconvenience if you were to get a pothole. Luckily, we have nice roads in Idaho, not like the Midwest uh, where this happened. I'm not sure where I'm going with this. So all said and done, from when we hit the pothole to when we were back on the road, it took six and a half hours. And that was pretty much best case scenario because we were within 50 miles of a service center and they had wheels in stock. So everything that needed to happen, happened same day in the time that it should have occurred. Uh, so six and a half hour ordeal is pretty much best case scenario if you hit a pothole and you damage your wheels. Now, as I mentioned, this happened on a state maintained highway. So legally, you can submit a claim 
to that state's Department of Transportation and say, hey, your road was broken, you broke my car, you have to pay for what you broke. Now, the challenge here is that the state must be found negligent. So I filed a claim uh, for this expense and I included my invoice and all that stuff. Uh, but when I was talking with the lady on the phone with Illinois Department of Transportation, she said the state has to be found negligent. And basically what this means is, first of all, someone has to report that pothole so that the state knows that it's there. Then the state has 30 days to actually do something about the pothole. And if it happens to be raining for any of those 30 days, well, it doesn't really count because you can't fix potholes in the rain. And so essentially what she was saying is, you know, go ahead and file the claim, but it's extremely unlikely uh, that you're actually going to get anything out of this. So I filed it, we will see what happens, uh, but uh, it seems like the state here uh, kind of has all the leverage. So you're telling the state, hey, will you pay for this? And then the state just gets to decide on their own. It's not really like this insane legal process. So they just say, uh, no, we weren't negligent. We just have potholes because it's the Midwest. It's terrible winters. And then everything's ruined in the spring and it rains. Now, perhaps the tone of this video has kind of been a bit of a bummer. And that's not my intention. I'm generally a positive guy and I try to look on the bright side. I do think in this scenario, you know, it would be nice for all Tesla service centers, first of all, to stock these wheels. And I think a super great bonus would be if we were, you know, if there were 18 inch wheel options for these Model 3 performances. I think that would be awesome. So those are, those are my two suggestions uh, for whatever they're worth, which is literally nothing. Uh, but uh, I, I do really enjoy this vehicle. I think, you know, for the price, it is an insane vehicle. It's face melting fast uh, when you put your foot down. I, I quite enjoy it. I think this whole scenario was a bit of a bummer uh, because three grand to hit a pothole is, is not thrilling. But either way, this is advice and tips and whatever, and you can take that information and do whatever you may with it. Uh, but know if you're buying one of these things and considering going on a road trip, uh, this is potentially what might happen. Thank you all so much for watching. If any of you have any pothole, tire, wheel destroying stories, I would enjoy reading them in the comments below just so I can be like, well, let's have another people. I don't feel so terrible. Uh, but thanks again for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.